Greetings, this is Greg. This is a quick video on how to set up and program the water methanol injection system from VatrixUSA.com. It's also on my site at Eurocompulsion.net. First, a quick overview of the system. There are three main components. I'll start with the three gallon tank that looks like a subwoofer. Why would anyone want a tank that looks like a subwoofer? Simply because there are parts of the world or situations where you might want to be stealthy. The tank is also designed to provide a reliable feed to the pump in all sorts of driving, drag racing, road courses, etc. The pump mounts right to the tank, hiding it and simplifying installation. It also eliminates any possible pump priming issues. It will always self-prime in this location. Perhaps most importantly, we have the boost gauge, which is also the pump controller. This is really the centerpiece of the whole kit. The system can be programmed right through the gauge. No need to start up and connect a laptop or fumble around with a remotely located or bulky controller. I'll show just how easy it is to program in a few minutes. Next up, we have the pump. As with everything else in this system, it's 100% methanol compatible. Normally, on my cars, I inject water or a mix of water and methanol. However, there are cases where pure methanol is desirable, and even some unusual cases where a mixture of water and ethyl alcohol is preferable. This system is fine with any of those. The pump is preset to 250 PSI, but can be adjusted as high as 400 PSI. Be aware that pumps are usually rated by their maximum setting, not what they're actually set up for. I'm talking about water injection pumps right now. A lot of the 300 PSI pumps on the market are set for lower values, and the vendors don't always tell you that. I do. Once again, this is set up for 250 PSI. If for some reason you need more, you can go up to 400. The kit includes a solenoid and a low-pressure check valve, which is built into the included spray nozzle. There are, of course, various nozzle sizes available. You need to tell us which one you want when ordering. All of the wiring is easy to understand. It's laid out here as it would be if it was actually connected in a car. It's as plug and play as possible. That means that other than power and grounds to the car and the boost line to the intake manifold, it's all plug and play. Let's talk about programming it. Then I'll show a video of me doing that in real time. First, you point the included remote at the gauge and press the boo button. That tells the gauge you want to communicate with it. There are other buttons there for other Vatrix gauges, EGT and so on. On my cars, I also run a Vatrix Air temp gauge to measure the intake air temperature. I find this very useful to avoid heat soak issues in the staging lanes at the track. Anyway, right now I need to talk to the boost gauge, so I'll press the boo button. Next, I need to tell the boost gauge what I want to do. I want to set the low spray setting, so I press the button showing less water spray. Then I use the up and down arrows to adjust the gauge to the point at which I want the low spray to start. Then I press circle to lock it in, circle again to resume normal operations. Next, I repeat this process for the high spray button. As an example, I might set the system to start spraying at 10 PSI of boost, at which point it will spray a reduced amount of fluid. Then I have it set to go to maximum spray at 15 PSI or whatever. This works very well as it allows you to spray quite a bit without bogging the engine down with too much spray too soon. I should mention that the gauge itself is a really good boost gauge. It's very accurate and fast responding. It also has an auto bright dim feature, or if you want, the brightness can be manually controlled, which I never do because the auto function works so well. It has a high boost recall, aka a tattletale feature, which I find very useful. You can also set an overboost warning, which is really loud. It also includes a light that will illuminate if you're using the optional low level fluid sensor for the tank. So let's program this thing in real time. I have it all set up sitting on my dyno so you can see it in action. The intercooler being used is just a shop test intercooler, but it does have fittings to allow for intercooler sprayers. Intercooler sprayers can be easily added to a water injection system. Now we will program the system in real time. Excuse me while I struggle with getting the camera to focus on the right thing. We're going to start off and press the boo button that tells the boost gauge we would like to talk to it. Now we need to say what it is we want to talk about. I want to press the low spray button, press that, then use the arrows to set the boost gauge 
and tell it where we want it to start low spray. Then circle, circle to reset the gauge. Now we want to talk to the gauge again, boo button, and then the high spray button. I'm struggling to get it to focus on the remote here. There we go. So you see the high spray button. We tell it that's what we want, and we set that. So now it will, once we hit circle, circle here, it will start the low spray setting at 5 PSI, the high spray setting at 10 PSI. Some Euro Compulsion intercooler kits, like the 124 race intercooler shown here, and the about-to-be-released Mustang EcoBoost race intercooler, have fittings to allow intercooler sprayers to be used. With a water injection system, as long as you're spraying water and not spraying methanol, you can use a solenoid to tee into the system and add intercooler spraying into the equation. Normally, this is not needed, but it's desirable in some situations. For example, if you're doing some type of long rally racing in a very hot and dry climate, intercooler sprayers can help. Or if for some reason you can't put an adequate intercooler on your car, this can be a band-aid to the problem. Here's an intercooler spray setup in action on our shop test intercooler. That's all for now. Goodbye and have a great day.